Welcome to Beautiful Savior here at ZTech Washington. As we gather at the close of the day for a time of prayer and a time to turn to God's Word with our evening prayer service. Tonight for our evening prayer service, we will be turning to the book of Galatians, where we will be hearing readings from Galatians chapter 3. Let us turn to our opening response. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall declare your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Give praise to the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We sing our first song for the evening. Galatians chapter 3, starting at verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Christ Jesus was publicly portrayed and crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him, as righteousness. Now then, that is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham, and the scripture foreseeing that God who justify the Gentiles by faith, preaching the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law, and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by, faith, by the law, 
for the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not of faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hanged on a tree. So that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. As we close off our day, we are reminded that whatever you have done today, God is there for you. Whether you had a great day or a terrible day, it is not through your actions that you were saved. It is not through what you have done, but that Christ took upon that curse. Christ took upon the law that we couldn't fulfill, and we now can rest in his peace. We rest not in what we have done, but in what he has done for us. And so let us confess our sins to God and to one another. We confess, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant you forgiveness of all of your sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We turn back to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, starting at verse 15. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now, the promises were made to Abraham and his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who was Christ. This is what I mean, the law, which came 430 years afterward, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God, so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise. But God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made. And it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now, an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. As we join together for our prayers, we want to remind you that if you have prayer needs, you can always ask that those be included by contacting us through the office or through the many ways that you can contact us online, as well as the fact that during this time of prayer, there will be a time of silence to lift up our needs, our worries, and our time of thanksgiving. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us join together in prayer.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you as your servants, giving you thanksgiving for all the goodness, all the loving kindness, all the ways that you have shown us your love to mankind. We give you praise for all of the gifts that you've given to us this day, for the ways you continue to preserve us, for the ways you continue to bless our lives. We continue to see your love in more ways than we can count, your redemption through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, his means of grace, the way that we are saved and given that hope and eternal glory. As we turn to you in prayer, we come before you with only a glimpse of that sense of all of your mercy. We come before you with our hearts and our mouth and our lips, praising you for everything you have done for us. We'd ask that you would help us to walk in your holiness, in your righteousness, all the days of our life, that you would be with us as we come to a close of our day, that, you, that your testimony of all that you have done for us will be on our lips, and that we would share that with others, that we would act based off of what you have done, that we would be sustained and comforted in times of trouble, and that we would be received into your everlasting kingdom. Hear us now, Lord, as we come before you, lifting up those worries that we have, those concerns that we have for those around us, those things that we see that we cannot control, but know that you are greater. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We'd ask, Lord, for your peace. Your peace in this time, as we go through a time where many are lacking that peace, many are turning away from you without even intending it, as they have a time where it is harder for many to be in your word, or many cannot even be in physical worship. Let us know your peace, your peace that passes our understanding, your peace that sent your word to become flesh, that there is none other that can defend us except for you, Lord, we pray to you. Help us to have holy desires. Help us to be in your good counsel. Help us to do works for our neighbor as you have done peace for us so that we can be your servants in a time of, an, of unrest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those that are going through times of distress, for those that are struggling during this pandemic, for those that are struggling with all of the natural disasters that we see all around us. We pray, Lord, for those that are struggling to find peace. We'd ask, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would care for them, and that you would be with those that are drawing near to death. Let your mercy draw, dawn upon us, and let your mercy be with those that call upon you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We'd ask, Lord, that you would be with our families, be with those that are preparing to give birth, those that are pregnant. We'd ask, Lord, for safety in that time. We ask, Lord, that you would be with people who dwell in our houses, those that we are not able to see because of this pandemic, those that we care for, we'd ask that your blessing would be with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give you thanksgiving, Lord, for all of the many gifts that you gave to us. As we come to our close of the day, we reflect on all of the ways you continue to provide. You continue to give to us more than we even realize. Hear us now as we lift up to you our thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up prayers, Lord for those that continue to be in charge of the care and nurture of children, for those that continue to work to enlighten them and teach them your ways. We'd ask your blessing on our school here, on our teachers, on our administrator, director, and we ask that you would let them be at peace at this time. We also lift up, Lord, those that continue on serving and aiding your church throughout the world. We lift up our district president, President Linneman, as he continues to go through his tasks. We'd ask that you would be with the president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate, 
as he continues on providing aid, counsel for those churches throughout this nation. Give to both of these men your zeal, your wisdom, and your rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we join together, Lord, giving you thanks and praise, turning to you in this time, hear us now as we pray as you taught us. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we turn now to our next song, we also turn to our reading from Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, starting at verse 21. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if the law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then, the law, our guardian, until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now the faith has come. We are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. As we close this night, we turn to God knowing that he is with us. In peace, we lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. 
Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Amen. We close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank Thank you, you, my my heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, through through Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, your dear dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I I pray pray that you would forgive forgive me all my my sins where I have have done done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Rest in God's peace.